What's going on? My name is Ethan J, and welcome to my brand new YouTube channel. This is the setup, man. It took a while, it took ages to get everything together, but it's finally, finally here, and I'm ready to upload some content. This is going to be a page where I upload deep dives into my Photoshop workflow, whether that's for personal projects or client work, and even the ugly side of design. All of that's to come, all of that's down the line. Today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. It's not sports design, that's going to come. Bear with me, but it's a movie poster style design for Spider-Man No Way Home. I've recorded this intro about a million times. So with that said, let's jump into Photoshop and get started. So here we are in Photoshop. I have all the Spider-Mans cut out already because no one's trying to sit there and watch me cut out all these Spider-Mans. So I just need to organize them now into a nice superhero-ish kind of pose. This will work. I think we can work with this. But what I need to do is color correct all of them because they're all looking a bit meh. And I'm gonna use a hue and saturation set to colorize. I'm gonna turn it to blue. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint in all the areas that you can see here that look, that should be blue, but look a bit orangey, purpley. They just don't look like Spider-Man. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint in all those areas. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the reds as well, but I'll hop back in once I've done all of that. Okay, so I've just about finished up on the reds, but I've left the eyes because what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to get a vibrancy layer, turn the saturation all the way down and I'm going to paint in where the eyes are. This is going to make the eyes look super neutral and just fit in much better with the overall graphic instead of being nasty and yellow, you know? So here we are. This is how it looks without the editing and this is how it looks with the editing. Much better in my opinion. So now I just need to go ahead and color correct the rest of them. Okay, so I've applied all the color correction to the rest of the Spider-Mens. So they're all color corrected now and they're all ready to go into our main composition. Fresh new comp. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna add in my buildings first. Free image that I found by the way on Pixabay. And I'm gonna just place this round about here. And I'm gonna drop in my sky. I wanted a nice sunset look for this image. I also need to add in some light bloom for the sun in the background. So I'm just going to add that in. Okay, so I also found some cool rubble photos. So I'm going to do a quick sky select and drop those into the comp here. What I want to do is cover up the whole bottom part of the background buildings image. So I'm going to place that around about here. That should be okay. And I also found another one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use a lasso tool and quick select all of these areas here done that now let's drop that in now we just need to arrange everything so it looks okay i'm gonna play around with it and then i'll jump back in once i'm happy with how everything's arranged there you go now we just need to add in some haze to the background to get rid of those last little cars over there in, in the horizon um let's get make that a little bit darker shade it in there now we're getting somewhere now we're getting somewhere starting to look good. Next thing I need to do is add in a building blur because I want the buildings in the background to be blurry. So let's go ahead and add in that field blur. This will just make sure all the buildings at the front are nice and sharp and in focus. And the rest of the buildings can look like they're in the background. So I'm gonna add one to the left side, one to the right side, and we're good to go. Now we just need to add some vignette. Vignette? Vignette. We need to add this, the dark stuff around the edges to make it, to make <laughs> We need to add dark shadows to the edges to make sure everyone looks at the center of the image and not around the edges. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. Now, I found a photo of a New York taxi. So I'm just gonna do a quick select of this because I want this to go in the foreground of our graphic. Something like that will do, something around there. I'm gonna make it blurry as well. So if it's not super sharp, it doesn't really matter. Okay, now I just need to add some shadows and highlights. I'm just gonna paint in here. Well, the shadows are gonna go like that. I'm gonna do the same with the highlights. Right, add some highlights here, right around the top because I want fire to be around this car eventually. So let's just add some highlights in. Now we start to make things a bit more interesting. We're adding in the main villain, Doc Ock. Let's just drop him in there. There you go. I had to rearrange the layers a little bit to make it look better. But now I need to move the sky because the sky is in the wrong place. Something like that will do. Yeah, because then we can see the yellow and the blue and all that kind of stuff. 
Now I have this starry night sky texture that I wanted to use in the silhouette of Doc Ock. If that makes sense. If it doesn't, just watch, it will make sense. Like this. This is how I wanted it to look. But I didn't want it to take over the whole silhouette. Just the bottom half, if that makes sense. So he's going to get rid of some over his face and at the top. Went ahead and added in some glows as well because everything looks better with, with glows, I guess. I'm also adding some blur to the, to the car in the foreground. Then we need to add in some fire. Like I said, I wanted some fire in this foreground as well to make things a little bit brighter. So let's just put that in, set it to linear and also add a blur to the fire as well. Put that there. Perfect. Also dropping in some embers. So I'm going to add in a whole different bunch of like fire textures and ember textures and we'll jump back after I've arranged everything nicely. There you go. Now we're looking good. Now we're looking good. What's next? We're in a good place right now. We're in a good place. I actually want to move this street light so that it's in front of the Doc Ock silhouette. You know, because right now it just looks weird that it's behind him. So I'm going to go ahead with the lasso tool and just grab a quick selection. I could use the pen tool for this. But who's got the time for that? And there, simple. Easy way to add depth to a graphic. Okay, now I've got one of the Green Goblin pumpkin bombs that I've already added some shadows and highlights to that I wanted to drop in to the main composition just here. I want that to be in the bottom left, kind of similar to the taxi. I kind of want it to be blurred a little bit as well. So let's just bring some rubble to the front. That'll make it look like it, it belongs more like this. Something like that, that'll work. And then let's make sure the pumpkin bomb is blurry too. Now, I just need to get rid of some of the vignette around there to make it look a bit brighter. And there you go. That's it, much better. We also need to add some glow to this as well because there's some glowing elements to this that we need to highlight. So let's get a nice green color and add a new layer set to screen. And just paint that in there. There and there. I also want to add in a light bluish glow like that to the top part as well. I think that'll look pretty good. Let's add that in like that. Perfect. We're looking good. Right. So I rearranged some of the layers a little bit to make sure the pumpkin bomb stood out a little bit more because it was, it was getting a bit lost in the bottom corner there. But now I think we're ready to add in the Spider-Mens. There you go. Let's resize them a little bit. They need to be quite a lot smaller. That works. Let's add in a guide as well so I can find out exactly where the center is and just make sure we're around that kind of area like that. Perfect. Now, I found this photo of Tom Holland and Doctor Strange on Google. Uh, I just need to change the contrast of this a little bit because it's very uncontrasty. What? You know what I'm trying to say. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly select both of these and drop them back in. And there you go. Put make sure they're below the spider mens Flip this image like that because I want them looking in the opposite direction. Scale it down a little bit. And I just need to do the same thing to Doctor Strange. So there you go. Added Doctor Strange in and Tom Holland in, in the background. Also want to add in one of the Doctor Strange portals as well behind all of our free spider guys. While we're here too, let me drop in the actual Spider-Man logo. Just so I can kind of be aware of how the entire composition is going to shape up. Let's put that in there. Somewhere around here we'll do-ish. Now, doing that has made me realize you can't really read the text properly. So that starry night photo that we had, I'm just going to rotate that so that the dark part is at the bottom. And I'm going to move the kind of light glowy bits up towards the top. It's like this. You know, I just think that will make the text a lot more legible. Now with them new lights at the top, I need to add some blue light reflecting off of Tom Holland here at the top. So using a hue and saturation set to colorize, I'm going to create a nice blue shade, change the blend if so it only affects the lighter colors and not really the shadows like that. Invert the mask and just paint in where I want these highlights to be. Just like that. There on his shoulder, side of his neck. Just there. And I need to also do the same thing for Doctor Strange. So I'm going to do that as well. Perfect. Okay, let's duplicate that. Clip it to Doctor Strange. 
create another mask and just add that in there as well. I also need to make a hue and saturation that's orange that matches the sunset over his right shoulder. So I'll do that in a second too. Okay, let's add an exposure layer to add some highlights around the edge as there's a massive sunset going on and he's not lit accordingly. And then let's add in another hue and saturation that's orange and paint that in too. Okay, so now I want to make the Doctor Strange pool look a little bit more like it does in the movies. So I'm going to go ahead and a couple of duplicates of the ellipse, turn the feather up and also change the blend mode. Probably make a couple of these. I'm going to head and drop in some Sparks photos. Also got rid of a bunch of the background elements so I could focus more on, on this one little part. But I need to warp this Sparks photo so it looks like it's actually going around in a circle as opposed to just flying off to the side which looks ridiculous. Okay, so this has been that around there. I'm going to have to go ahead and apply this to all of the Sparks photos that I've added in. So I'm probably going to jump ahead so you ain't going to sit there and watch me use the warp tool a thousand times. And there you go. Added in a bunch of stock images that I found. And we're just at the end here making it look like fireworky like it does in, in all the Marvel films. I also got rid of more background elements as well just so I could really focus on how all these Sparks were looking. We're definitely getting there. We're definitely, definitely getting there with this. I think we can make the uh, Spider-Mens a little bit smaller, actually. I think they look a bit too big in the context of the overall graphics. So let's get those, scale them down just a little bit like that. We also need to add in some light bloom. So let's go ahead and duplicate the sun glow, change the color a little bit, and then just paint that in there like that there and around there. I also wanted to add in some kind of galactic looking photos to this as well to make like the starry night texture have a bit more to it because right now it looks a bit plain, it looks a bit boring. So I'm going to go ahead and move the image around until I'm happy with it but I won't bore you with that whole process so I'll jump back in as soon as it's done. There you go. Now it's kind of set up how I want it to look. I actually had the idea to bleed some of the edges of this like galactic cloud stuff out of the Dr. Octopus silhouette. So I'm just gonna go ahead and feather kind of some of these outline edges to make it look like the clouds are actually coming out of the silhouette. And there you go. This is actually going pretty well. Better than I expected it was gonna go, to be honest. Um, now let's drop back in the Spider-Man logo. Yo, we are getting somewhere. This is almost done. I think this is basically finished. I'm going to go ahead and do a bunch of other little touch ups and stuff. Stuff that I don't really know what I want to do yet. Just playing around and just kind of like seeing what works and what doesn't work. But I don't really know how to narrate that. So I'm just going to put that in a speed art and we'll cut back after I'm finished. And there you go. As you can see, I'm just in camera raw now going through all the little color tweaks that I usually do on all my designs. My workflow actually takes me through After Effects and that's the little RGB and blurring that you can kind of see on the edges. But I'm not going to include that in this video because it's going to take too much time. But if you want to see a video on that, let me know in the comments and I'll get that done. But that's it. I think the design turned out really well. I'm actually going to be uploading a full speed art of this over on my Instagram at Ethan J Design. So if you want to see it, go check that out and thanks for watching my first YouTube video. I want to be pretty consistent with this. I'm going to try and upload every week. We'll see how that goes, balancing it with work. But if you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks again for watching. Peace.